Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com where you can find cool stuff in stock every day and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hello. On location at the moon base. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty I have more fun. monitors and I know what to do with. <laughs> Ruben Bressler. Apparently this week I'm cosplaying as the Tan and Grace, according to my co-host. It's very uh, Tan and Grace. Mm -hmm. doing, doing a good job there. That said, we also get started with our Trumpet Blast. We had a few last week. We don't this week, but you can get one if you support us at our highest level on Patreon. You can make me say all sorts of things, like I'm wrong. That's that's a thing yeah. you can do. It's fine. You can read a sentence that makes Evan Irwin tell himself that he's wrong. That I am a doo-doo head. And we kick it that's off. It. That's right. With the first pick in the giveaway, as I mentioned, if you were here at the very at the very tip top of the broadcast, uh, exclamation mark raffle to get yourself into the winnings for uh, or the try to win a fifty dollars gift to give it to CoolStuffInc.com. Thanks for Cool Stuff for providing that, of course. And we get to our first pick. One from the Philippines is in chat. Hey, Mobu, hi. I see you. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. All right. We have a preview. A free. We have to mention that. <laughs> Hashtag free, free preview. Hashtag sponsored. Hashtag free preview. Hashtag ad. Hashtag living our best ad life. Hashtag free. Pre I'm posting all these in the chat for later. Gotcha. 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 Sponsored. Hashtag sellout. Right. We're totally hashtag selling. Speaking of selling out, uh, as you do, uh, I want to bring up here that we are going to have an all day stream. I was going to bring it up later. Oh, screw right. it. I'm bringing it up right now. January 16th. That's next Wednesday. We're going to not only give you a brand new episode of Magic Mike's that evening, just like you've always gotten and you like it. We're going to give you streams of Ravnica Allegiance all day long. That's right. I'm going to play Arena. Oh, man. Aaron's going to play Arena. It's going to be terrific. I'm going to be building so many decks. I cannot wait to build around all these awesome cards. Ruben's going to be brewing all the way almost up until it's time to record I'll the pre-show. I will be copying all of your deck lists. Just, just like... If you think I'm going to be brewing and not just playing Mono Red, boy, do you have another thing? No, about? you're going to be brewing Mono Red. I'm going, I'm going to be, be brewing, brewing Mono Red with Light Up the Stage. I'm going to have new copies of Lightning Bolt in my deck with the new uh, the new Lightning Bolt they printed. Oh, um, my Aaron. God. That card's insane, and we'll talk about it here in a little bit. That said, we have a preview card directly from wizards this completes the cycle as far as i know i think we know every other one of the ccdd the did the rap did the bread no 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 this is this happened last week we don't need this raffle in our lives popular it's a lot of people cool. got into the raffle and then it broke yeah i don't understand why that happens but it happens and that makes me sad why do you do this Thank you, Beyond Sadistic, for the sub. You bet. You know, Wizards asked me, they were like, Aaron, what do we have to do to get you to play Arena? They were like, baby, what do we got to do? And I, they were like, we'll give you four of every card. And I was like, I'm listening. Well, they don't, they don't <laughs> give it to us. They'll lend us. Right. But I mean, I don't, at least it means I don't have to open my packs and grind herbs like some peasant and make cards. Yeah, grind yes, herbs. Oh, my Ride God. Herbs. All right. So I, I turned off entries and turned them back on. Let's see if that worked. Last week, I had to turn it off and on like three times which is insane, but okay. Uh, all right. we'll, give it another, we'll give it another couple minutes. After the preview, if it's still borked, we'll just restart it, okay? Yeah. Because you guys are here to see a new card, brand new magic yes. card, doing brand new stuff. Yep. That's, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Sunder. Okay. We're talking about Sunder Shaman. Sunder Shaman is a red, red, green, green, uncommon giant shaman. It is a 5-5 five, five that can't be blocked by more than one creature. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. So yeah. It's Boy, awesome. howdy, is that a card? That's a giant monster of pain right there. Yeah. That's red, red, green, gr four mana for a 5-5 five, five that can't be blocked by more than one creature. All right, we got plenty of text left on the card. Mm -hmm. What's the downside? Oh, oh, the downside is that we get to destroy our opponent's stuff, too? We get a free disenchant? Yes. Jeepers. And it's uncommon. Woo! Wow. Nowhere else still in the format. That's right. So, this could come down on turn three. This is the perfect type of card, and this is another one of those good examples of the best of one thing that we have just sort of talked about nonstop for weeks now as it's kind of sunk in like wait a minute best of one is actually really taking over this card didn't necessarily need that secondary ability however being a naturalize on a stick it gives you so much more play 
with all the other decks you're going to play in limited with all the decks you might play in constructed because now you have your naturalized stuck on an awesome creature and you don't yep. have to you know have a whole card be that naturalized that's right yeah you got a five five for four mana like that was already good enough back in the day oh, yeah. uh and young mage is correct goes really well with his gruel uh clan guild mage uh, that was his preview card um this card's really exciting i mean I, I, we were talking about in the top tens recording that we've got ourselves uh quite the decent green centric deck of just our preview cards from magic mics uh sunder shaman being a welcome addition to the to the family yeah it is uh it is a super awesome cool creature uh again it completes the cycle which is awesome i think it's one of the best ones uh which is nice too and uh and thanks much for wizards for providing this free preview absolutely hashtag free preview hashtag sponsored hashtag ad hashtag uh hashtag hashtag uh, hashtag y'all we'll keep coming up with hashtags as evan resets the uh the the, the whatever all right, so I had to uh, turn it off because it hates us. I don't know why it does that, but it does that. So we're going to make this zero hours, 53 minutes long. Good luck, everybody. I'm and going it's to, working? I'm starting it, it right now. All right, All right. we're starting it Let's one more time. It's and already up on Mythic Spoiler. I oh, love it. Man. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But we've got so much to talk. We've got weeks of stuff that we have to cover here. Let's get going. There is the RNA pre-release, the Ravnica Allegiance pre-release, pre-pre-release tomorrow. Aaron, you're in it. You've been traveling all day. A little tired. Right. But how how is uh how is it meeting the LR crew and and the Moon Base and all that? It has been really, really lovely. So I arrived today. Um, so tomorrow we are going to be building our decks, uh, recording some some pre-recorded content, getting a feel for like the set and what it means to be the the table friend and things of that nature. I got to meet Search tonight, the the lovely judge. Um, and then Friday is the day we go live. And so I'm actually recording at the moon base. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, it is completely anonymous. Like it reminds me of when you when you think of comic books or you think of the new Ghostbusters movie and you have sort of the incognito base where it appears to be a Chinese restaurant. It's not a Chinese restaurant though, um, but it, but secretly, you know, there's like a wall that flips or there's an upstairs level um, and then you're in, you're there. And so I'm here, I've been taking lots of pictures. They were gracious enough to let me record here. Um, I'm sitting in their chair, the green background. Um, it's pretty surreal. So I'm really, really excited. I know what clan I'm gonna play, what guild I'm gonna play. Um, you guys don't even know. Um, and so I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I just hope that we can put on a good show um, and that you guys tune in and that you're glad that you do. I'm I I'm, I, I'm always shocked at how literally Serge is one of the chillest people I've ever met in my life. Like he is he is cool incarnate. He's just yeah. He is really cool. But yeah, the setup is really professional. So I have two square, I have two box lights beaming down on me right now, one behind me. I have two microphones dangling from above, three monitors. I mean, this setup is wild. There's a switchboard looking thing here, two different headsets. I mean, these guys are legit. Yeah. I'm all, I was so impressed when I was up there too. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think that there's ever going to be a Magic Mike's base because I don't think that we, any of us, two of us, aren't going to move. I think is is the bottom line there. Like, I don't want to move to I don't want to move to Orlando. What's wrong uh, with Orlando? It, it's the Devil's Arm. Redheads don't keep Aaron, well with Evan. We we we're like leftovers. We need to be in cool, tight spaces. Right. Exactly. Hey, it's not going to be more than higher than 60 tomorrow. That's going to be great. Evan, Evan ain't going to move away from his beloved Central Florida. Well, he um, also can't leave his brood behind. I mean, that's true. Yeah, you gotta nice. it, it's, you gotta pack them all into the into the fun wagon, um, and make sure and make sure that the whole crew of ducklings follows right behind. So it, it's cool to see stuff like that. I, I've never ended up getting to see the Good Luck High Five uh, Studios just yet. Um, but I've obviously seen the Star City Games set up. I saw the Channel Fire, some of the Channel Fireball set up uh, at one point. And so I'm always impressed uh, by Loading Ready Runs in particular because they do so much. They have so many, um, they've got like the most impressive prop closet that I've ever seen. Yep. Um, which I'm oh, a the big prop fan closet's of. amazing. Uh, all right. So, so we got to keep moving here. Let's talk about some previews. I hope you open some of these awesome cards, Aaron, and you're able to build with them because that would be super fun. Uh, but first up, let's talk about Dovin Bon, uh, Dovin Grand Arbiter. 
There's a blue, a white, and generic mana for a three loyalty mythic planeswalker, Dovin. Uh, has one plus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on it. Minus one, <clears throat> make a one one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, and you gain a life. Or minus seven, look at the top ten cards of your library, put three of them in your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This card to me is basically saying that a blue white tempo deck is going to exist. This is exactly what you want to be doing after playing your history of banali or whatever on turn three, uh, and you're playing your the new rune snag that's coming out because you don't have mana leak, but you got right. that, which is great. Well, or whatever. And this first ability, adding loyalty counters in a really weird, strange way, is awesome and novel and just not your average like you know kill a thing, protect yourself, or win the game. It does something new. I don't know. I think it. I think it shows the circles that we run in. What people were talking about. Like I was following a lot of the Vorthoses, and I wasn't really following people that were excited about what the card did. I was following the people that were like, "Do you know Dovin has six fingers?" Right. <laughs> like, That's right. And then you know, I think it was Doug Byer. It might have been Kelly who came out and and elaborated or clarified as to the Vidalkin and how many fingers they have and things of that nature. So that's what the people I follow were talking about was Dovin's fingers. Right. Um, I don't know much about how good it is, but that, that's what people were talking about. Yeah, if you watch The Broken Pact, you know that there was a big plot point about one of the Vidalkin that I had as a character in the show had five fingers and how that was like sort of a turning point for that scene. Um, Dovin is dope. Dovin is really cool. Um, I think it's a just a really great card. It's interesting that they made him not good for control. This is a tempo yes. Dovin. Um, which is super interesting, uh, where, you know, you got your chump blocker mode, but the real uh, selling point here is getting that plus one to get you to ultimate the next turn and be able to uh, dove in through time um, and get a whole bunch of cards. <laughs> Well, I mean, they, they, we, they've they given us the one mana 1-1 one, one flyer that has Adept that gets cheaper as instants and sorcerers in a graveyard. Adapt. Adapt, Let sorry. me tell you, there are conversations in the Dredge Discord about that card. I believe it. That card's really good. That card's I mean, blue, blue for a five, five, five. <laughs> five, five flyer. Like that's legit. So yeah. that card is insane. There's a terrific two drop that they came out with. It. It's a merfolk or whatever uh, that lets you loot whenever you adapt it, which is cool. Um, and again, you don't have to play Dovin on turn three. That's not necessarily his best right. look is usually to play it on turn four or even five swing with a bunch of guys, hit them a bunch of times and then use Dovin and use his ultimate the next turn, which is absolutely ridiculous mm -hmm. and, uh, and go from there, which is fantastic. Let's keep moving here. Uh, to our other planeswalker, uh, Kaya Orzov Usurper. I got him in the wrong order here, but that's fine. Uh, it is a she is a black, white, and a generic mana for a three loyalty mythic planeswalker Kaya. Plus one, exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life if at least one creature card was exiled this way. Minus one, exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. Minus five, she deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile, and you gain that much life. This card is weird. Yeah. I, I don't know what to do exactly with Kaya. No. It's interesting. I like it. I mean, it's uh, it's a good way to t take care of that one mana five five that we were just discussing. Um, that ultimate is very often going to end a game by itself with something like uh, that removes all cards from a graveyard or is able to exile a bunch of things. Uh, things like Relic of Progenitus or Pajukabog are particularly good with it. Um, so, you know, I, I think that it, it has its place. Uh, again, a weird card, not particularly great in Constructed, I wouldn't say. Or not in Constructed, in Control, I wouldn't say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's a three-mana walker, so it remains to be seen. The thing is that Constructed formats tend to have a lot of one-drops, right? And there's a lot of one-drops that are good right now. Uh, and that will be going forward. You know, we're already going to be removing D2 Lava Mancers with this, uh, how, and, uh, and Sky Marcher Aspirants. How many more one-drops do we really need to have in the format before Kaya uh, becomes a, a good, stable part of it? 
I mean, most people would just been like, this card's terrible. Like, this card's just crap or whatever. And, fine. and to me, I think the card is super unique. It's interesting. A, Kai as a character, and, and Kai as Wrath, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But, like, the idea, for me, this is a very scalpel card. This is, this is solving... This is like solving problems that we might not even know exist yet, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, you're like, wow, I wish I'd had some, you know, a creature or a planeswalker that will remove cards from graveyards and then get rid of this stupid one drop that's way too powerful. And you're like, oh, Kai's over there. It's hanging out. That's cool. You won't hear yeah, it too. I mean, clearly not as good as Dovin, uh, just as a card by itself. Doesn't have the impact on the board that uh, that Dovin does. But, you know, could, who knows? If you can. Um all right, so move on here to Hydroid Crisis. Uh, this is a blue crisis. Crisis. Evan. Cra now it's Crassus? Is it Crisis? What What did I do? You're thinking of Ely Crisis. It's yeah. not the same. I am thinking of Ely Crisis. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Grand Prix champion Hydroid Crisis. I like I it. I love it. I'm Southern. All right. <laughs> and I apparently haven't said that word enough. So is it Crassus? Crasis, Crasis, whatever you want to do. Hydroid Crasis is a blue, a green, and X. It is a mythic zero zero jellyfish hydra beast. Yeah. Right. When you cast this spell, note when you cast it, it doesn't even have to resolve. You yep. gain half X life and draw half X cards rounding down. It has flying and trample and there's the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. So how could they make the Hydras actually playable? Because it was so hard to make them even remotely playable. Let's just give you life and cards and you um, play your insane Simic ramp deck and yep. you can just go completely nuts with it. These Simic creature types are really something else. I feel like someone was playing like pin the tail on the donkey where they like, you know, they blindfold you, they spin you around and then they put a wall full of creature types and then just kind of wandered over to the wall and whatever you happen to hit is whatever your creature was. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the elf lizard wizard guys. Yep. The elf, and we're not talking about necessarily per se, but the, the CCDD in Simic is uh, Mystic Snake, but yep. now a three, two and as an elf lizard wizard. Yep, that card's frilling. Um, the wow. uh, the Hydroid Crisis or Crisis Revelation, as it's sometimes been referred to, is uh, is pretty fantastic. So if X equals two, then you get a, a two two flying trample that draws a card and gains all life. Okay. But scales up really well from there. Right. Uh, six mana gets you two cards and two life and a four four flying trample for six mana. That's pretty good. And it just go keeps going and going and going. So I would expect to see this card be the centerpiece of a of a, of a deck, for sure. If, if there's a big ramp deck, it feels like it's going to probably be in there if it's going to work. And then you're going to have the issue that all ramp decks have, which is you draw the good half and not and not the... or You draw all the acceleration, but none of the payoff, <clears throat> or vice versa, when... Sometimes this actually solves a problem because oftentimes you'll find in a ramp deck is that you, you've you've done your ramp, right? And you're ready to do your big thing and they're ready to counterspell it. And you're like, well, I don't care. Like, you know, counterspell if you want to. I'm still getting cards and life off this thing, which is going to help you continue further uh, that type of stuff. So that's great. All right. So that's our first three. Let's go in here to our second three. Up first is Kaya's Wrath. Not since Return to Ravnica... Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Have we had a four mana wrath in the format? Not since Supreme yeah. Verdict. Unconditional. I mean, we have language, if that counts. But... Right. Unconditional. Right. We've no. also had Ritual of no. Soot, but Kaya's Wrath says destroy all creatures, period, and then has some text. Right. Four mana, sorcery, destroy all creatures, and whatever text is after. We haven't had that, I don't think, since Supreme Verdict. But for black, black, and white, white, it is a rare sorcery that destroys all creatures. You gain life equal to the number of creatures you controlled that were destroyed this way. That's powerful. Pretty neat. That, um, it goes really well with the afterlife mechanic that's in Orzhov because you're okay with killing your own creatures. Uh, a hard board sweep for four mana is is a big deal in standard. And so, uh, you know, while it is... It doesn't have a place to live right now. That's just because we didn't have Godless Shrine. We didn't have the black white right. mana base. And so trying to be like, well, this doesn't have a place to live in standard yet. That's, that's just how Ravnica sets work. So you got to wait, uh, just, just, you know, just a minute. Uh, and I think Kaya's Wrath is going to be uh, a good one. I mean, I think the idea that Esper Control now has a four mana Wrath is incredibly important uh, and a super big deal for them, which is great. Uh, you don't get Attention Sphere, but instead they put it on a stick. Yep. And thank God it's not a human. Thank God it's not a right. human. This was, that was the number or one. Or a spirit. Or a spirit. Or a spirit. The, the not a human was the number one voted thing on Reddit, and it wasn't close. Uh, for Deputy of Detention, 
is a blue, white, and a generic mana, the same cost as, as uh, Detention Sphere. It is a 1-3 rare Veldalkin wizard, not a human wizard. Thank you, wizards. When Deputy of Detention enters the battlefield, you exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name as that permanent until Deputy of Detention leaves the battlefield. We finally have, uh, you know, the, the Oblivion Rings on the stick. Well, we have Detention Sphere on a stick, and this card yeah. is still terrific, just like Detention Sphere was. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just uh, the fact that it can be bolted is a big deal. Detention Sphere was such a big problem, partially because it's really difficult to deal with enchantments, especially in a main deck. Right. So putting it on one three is perfectly reasonable. Um, I bet that card started out as a one four. I bet it was a one four, you know, for, for very specific reasons. We're getting a brand new bolt. Um, but right. instead, they're like, well, it needs to be answerable in a, in a variety of ways. And here we are. So it is another card in Collected Company's <laughs> arsenal. Mm -hmm. uh, for modern, but I think it's going to be all right. Should be fine. Let's get to some exciting stuff. Let's get to some green red. Let's talk about what could be one of the best cards in the set. Gruel Spellbreaker. This card is quite scary. Uh, it is a red, a green, and a generic mana for a 3-3 three, three rare ogre warrior with Riot. This is the Gruel mechanic. This creature enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one plus one counter or haste. Uh, it has Trample, and as long as it's your turn, you and Gruul Spellbreaker have Hexproof. That means Settle the Wreckage can't target you. Yeah. And that's <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. This was a really specific metagame and another, or a really specific metagame like creation by play design. And once again, Wizards of the Coast sort of not being real happy with their decision to print Settle the Wreckage um, as this is the main... That, that, that's what that, that ability is targeting. And I'll get back to Sphinx of, of Foresight here in just two seconds. That was me. I did skip over that one. But uh, but Gruul Spellbreaker, and Wizards even said, like, this was an answer to Settle the Wreckage, as Settle the Wreckage is an incredibly powerful one against the Carnage Tyrants or whatever the world, and that's what it needed to be. But now it's time to kind of swap back over, and let's let Gruul have a really terrific answer against that stuff and hope that you instead have a Cleansing Nova instead of a Settle the Wreckage or whatever. Or Kaya's Wrath. Right, exactly. Which will help out, too. Um, and we'll get to the, the Gruul uh, enchantment in just a second. Let's go back here uh, for a moment and talk about Sphinx of Foresight. A two blue, two generic mana, rare 4-4 four, four Sphinx that has flying, and you may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you scry one if this is on the battlefield. So huh. that is, this to me, if no other card said, like, seriously, blue-white tempo is going to be amazing, even maybe even mono-blue, which we've already seen be good, because yeah. you're able to run lower land counts because you're able to scry three with this thing for free at the very beginning of the game. This is also a card that people have been speculating on over on the manager range, which is the vintage board that I belong to, um, specifically when it comes to vintage dredge, you know, the calculations of... If you, if you look in your opening hand with either Serum Powder or this, what are your odds of finding the Bazaar? Because the whole goal is to get that, that turn one Bazaar going. And so you're seeing people kind of crunch those numbers of, is this worth bringing in? We're already kind of using a Force of Will build right now. With blue, it's a blue creature, and I think it's fascinating. Like, it's a card I wouldn't have looked at, but obviously there are people who see things I don't. And I love that they're running the numbers and the tables, and it could see vintage play. Wow. Yeah, it seems really good for creature-based combo. So things like Food Chain uh, could definitely make use of this card. Uh, a 4-4 four, four flying for four is like probably not good enough for standard, although it does trade off with the Drake. It, stands it scries every turn. It does scry every turn. It has a lot of ability stapled to it. And that early scry is huge. If you have two of these in your opening hand mm -hmm. and you get to scry three, scry three, that's essentially uh, uh, vampiric tutoring for your first two turns. It's pretty, that's pretty powerful. Right, that to me is incredibly powerful stuff. And the idea that, again, remember Thassa? Remember like everyone just kind of wrote Thassa off and it was like, wait, that Scry of Return is huge. Like that Scry of Return is a big deal for a tempo deck where you're looking yeah. for the unsummon, you're looking for the tap draw card thing that just came out. You're looking for the thing that makes Thopters or whatever because you're trying to get into the last evasive points. Uh, right. That stuff matters, I think, hugely. And that's why I think this card's gonna be really successful. And absolutely, just a spectacularly good card, as you mentioned, for Dredge because you're able to not have to, you know, your first draw step isn't going to have a dredge in it some amount of the time. And so being able to put your narc amoebas and your creeping chills second and third down, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to draw them is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about one of the most powerful enchantments I've seen in a while. 
and that is Rhythm of the Wild. Rhythm of the Wild is a green, a red, and one generic mana for an uncommon enchantment. Creature spells you control can't be countered, and non-token creatures you control have Riot. They enter the battlefield oh, with your choice of a plus one, plus one counter, or haste. And note that multiple instances of Riot do trigger just like Explore. Ruben, tell us, tell us about this one. Uh, I just I just want to bask in its glory is all I want to do. Um, I'm old enough to have played Fires of Yavimaya in my day. Um, for those of you who didn't get the, to experience Fires of Yavimaya, boy, howdy, is that a heck of a card. Fires, a little bit underpowered now, but still being able to give all of your creatures haste by itself, powerful ability. Mm -hmm. Being able to stack your riot triggers to be able to give them two plus one plus one counters or a plus one plus one counter and haste or just give it haste twice you know show them that you mean business um, <laughs> send a message in addition, in addition to the fact that it makes your creatures uncounterable turn one land where elves turn two fires of Yav uh, fires of yavi maya was a was a playable strategy before mm -hmm. turn one land where elves turn to rhythm of the wild going to be a playable strategy now i mean I, I, to me and this is not just on uh it's the look at the big riot creature right it's six mana it felt like that should be five mana but then you look at you look at domri and he's four mana and it feel like he should be three mana and i think you just see like the lanomore elves effect which is it feels like they might be a little expensive these days but you're also you have a leg up on getting in front of your opponent not to mention this crazy mana generator we'll talk about here in a few minutes um all right, so let's move on Other here. Other people in the chat that are that are thinking of what the name reminds them of, I keep thinking of a song from the '90s called "Rhythm of the Night." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, what makes me that's where I was with it too. Rhythm of the night. Rhythm of the night. The night. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yep. We're old. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> emergency powers is next. It's a white, a blue, and five generic mana for a mythic instant. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draw seven cards, and you exile emergency powers. But it's also the new mechanic addendum. Addendum says if you cast a spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. This thing feels like it's either completely insanely nuts or it's awful. Right. I can't figure out I which it is. Sure it's awful. <laughs> yeah. You don't. You don't like it. Mm, no. Feels because like it's, doesn't that seem to run, isn't that, I mean, maybe maybe this is a sign, you know, Evan, you mentioned that blue-white was kind of going in a tempo direction, but when I think blue-white, why would I why would I cast things on my main phase? Like, isn't the whole point that you want to have? Instant. Well, I mean, that's 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 the struggle, right? That's that's the, the push in the pool. That's where it's, that's the interesting the choice. push in the pool? No, push I mean, the pull. Pull, push and pull, like the, you oh, know, they the, said the bush in the pool. I'm like, what kind of Southern colloquialism is that? You sop it up with the bush in the pool, you say, <laughs> well, listen. All I'm saying is this is for me this it's really cool in that maybe there is some sort of combo-y thing, or maybe down the line, this is the type of card that could just sit dormant and then all of a sudden you're like, you know, emergency powers exist and everyone just like loses their mind and something stupid right. happens. Like that's mm -hmm. the type of card it is. In my See, Tito Monkey knows where I'm coming from. It's seven mana. I better I better get dinner, a back rub, and a ride home at that rate. Nice. Maybe paying for my yeah, Uber, I mean, y'all. <laughs> it's a draw seven. It's certainly gotta, you know, be looked at at least a little bit. Right. It's gotta be given some amount of seriousness. All right, let's keep moving here. Gosh, we got so much to do. Uh all right. So up next is the wrong slide. Up next is Incubation Druid. It showed up today. My God, this card is nuts. Uh, Incubation Druid is a green and generic mana for a rare O2 elf druid that taps to add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. If Incubation Druid has a plus one plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. And we're not done. It has two green, three generic mana colon, adapt three, which means if this creature has no plus one plus one counters on it, put three plus one plus one counters on it. So so you can turn it into a 3-5 in the late game that taps for three mana. Or there's this really cool card called Hadana's Climb that you yeah. can play the turn right <laughs> after this one, which puts a counter on it, which then gives you three mana, which means if you continue to hit your land drops, on turn four you have Omniscience. Wow, that's pretty cool. Omniscience is where we're headed with this card, is 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 exciting. Um, there's also Land of War Reborn, uh, which is a card yep. from Future Sight uh, that is really good with this card. Allows you to play six drops on turn three. Yeah. Um, even if you just go turn one land or else turn two this turn uh, or uh, yeah turn two this turn three adapt. You have a, a seven mana on on your next turn. Um, just a really cool, interesting design for this card. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's to me this thing is pushed, and I don't know how else to say it. Really, it's, quite good. It's very, very good. But now we get to hashtag on brand, hashtag Aaron Campbell. It's making it happen. Let's talk. Um. <laughs> let's talk about Priest of Forgotten Gods. Let's get them in the right order here. Priest of Forgotten Gods is a black and generic mana for a one-two rare human <laughs> cleric. And you may tap, sacrifice two other creatures, colon, any number of target creatures, each lose two life. I'm sorry, any number of target players, each lose two go. life and sacrifice a creature. You add two black and draw a card. So you're sacrificing two other creatures. The afterlife mechanic makes this no problem. Any number of target players, each lose two life and sack a creature. So it's fantastic in multiplayer anyway. And standard, they're still sacrificing what, you know, they're still sacrificing a creature. While you're not only getting mana, you're also drawing cards. This thing is a 1-2 rare. There's only 12 that exist at either rare or mythic in all of modern, which to me says this thing is probably bananas. Yeah, we, yeah. we're hoping for an aristocrat-style deck in standard, specifically black-white. You know, I know that Alenda, people have been speculating on Alenda. Her value has risen quite a bit. I believe she's touching double digits now, which she wasn't before. Mm -hmm. And she's really not seeing any play, so people are, are most likely getting those in advance. Um, I play she -Rae in EDH, which is one of my favorite EDH decks, and she is everything she -Rae wants to be doing, sacrificing two creatures, which you're going to get back anyways with she -Rae. And if you have to, she has one power, so she also can be brought back with she -Rae, um, the ability to get more mana and keep the engine going and also make your opponent sacrifice things each player being very relevant in commander i am so excited for this card yeah this is the first uh sack outlet that we have from this set that doesn't have a mana cost associated with sacrificing even though you have to tap this creature and sacrifice two others that's a big deal um you know a uh, high cost to be paid similar to Sturstag high priest uh, is what really reminds me uh, when I look at this card. But it is free, so you can go one drop, play this, play a three drop, use those bodies, and get some mana and draw a card. Really interesting card. I would not be shocked if this were the best card in the set. Um, I would not be I would not be totally surprised. I'm not calling that that's what it is. I just think that this card is extremely powerful, definitely going to have an archetype based around it. And for me... This is the most exciting flavor card in the set. Mm -hmm. uh, the Orzov are not the only religious tradition on Ravnica, nor the oldest for the, the priest Nephilim. of the gods. I love it. Yeah, the Nephilims being a the lot old, of people forget that the great old ones of the of the uh, the the Ravnica universe. You know, when people think of Ravnica, they think of the guilds, but you know that was a whole that was a whole plot line in and of itself. You know that there were sort of these old god type creatures. You know, the Nephilim that came back, and mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, I think Rakdos might have died fighting one, or was it? Yeah. So five, we know of five Nephilims, although yeah. there are theoretically more, but only five mm -hmm. were awoken. Okay. Um, uh, they returned. Niv Mizzet, I think, killed two of them, and then went into hiding to recover and lick his wounds. Okay. The other three went rampaging. Rakdos killed one of them. Then the other two killed Rakdos, and I forget how the other two were put down. But uh, yeah, they were they were high level baddies uh, in the original uh, Dissension story arc. All right, let's keep it moving here with Skewer the Critics. Oh my God! Skewer the critics. I love this card. This, this, <laughs> what this card? What was that? I love this card, and I normally wouldn't. I would play the crap out of this card. Wow! Skewer the critics is a red and two generic mana for a common sorcery that deals three damage to any target. But oh, it also has spectacle. Also known as the Rakdos mechanic. Spectacle of one red. You may cast this spell for its spectacle cost rather than its mana cost if an opponent lost life this turn. My God, Viashino Pyromancer turns this thing on as well as Wizard's Lightning. Yep. I am afraid of our 12 bolt standard we're about to come into. Yep. It's a lot of bolts. Certainly a lot of bolts in standard right now. And a lot of bolts in modern. You can play 16 in modern, I think, uh, when you've got this card and uh, and your Monastery Swift Spears and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Skewer the Critics, uh, just, a, just a great card name, great flavor. And obviously, uh, you know, you're never going to find a bigger lightning bolt fan than me. Let's get let's get the promo bolts out that I got. Nice. nice. It's a it's a it's a pretty close bolt approximation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wizards lightning. You need to have a wizard in play. That's tough. Spectacle. You only have to deal your opponent a damage. Oh, I can do that. The rest of my cards do that. Right. Yeah, so, they start the, 
there are there are quite a few enablers in the set, and and I'm hoping to get a chance to try it out for myself this weekend. But it seems like it's not going to be difficult to get spectacle going. No. No, it doesn't seem difficult no. at all. And Absolutely. there's there's a bunch of great creatures that have haste, and not to mention, you know, we already have the monkey in Ixalan, uh, who runs in the red zone on turn the one. Fanatical firebrand. Yes, yeah. the fanatical of the firebrands, uh, and that's incredible. So this card is already talked about as modern, modern playable. <laughs> oh, for sure. Popper, not even close. Like this thing's an auto in for the red decks that they were just waiting for something like this. Uh, yep. This is a card that I just don't want to skew Magic Arena best of one. Like, I feel like it's going to. And that concerns yeah. me. I mean, it's going to make life gain better, certainly. So you're going to see more uh, Sphinx's Insights, for example, probably. Um, you know, wanting to get out of uh, life loss range. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So, so Swift Spear, next turn. Uh, Bolt Skewer, get ya. That seems, that seems like a fair sequence of events. Ain't, ain't bad ain't shabby all right we got to keep moving here all right so we talked about it before i'm going to touch <laughs> real real fast if you didn't catch it at the top at the top of the show we are going to be streaming next wednesday all day starting at 11 a.m eastern we're going to be live at 11 a, 11 p.m eastern as usual that night but 11 a.m to 2 30 aaron's going to be playing magic arena with ravnica allegiance i'll take the helm from 2 30 to 6 o'clock and ruben will be on there from 6 o'clock to 9 30 and then we're off until the pre-show and then we'll be we'll be back at 11 p.m per huge uh Love and it. that's going to be super fun so please yeah, i'm excited um you know i'm not the strongest limited player but there's a great incentive there we're basically getting what's called what they call the god accounts mm -hmm. so we will have access to all of the cards we'll be able to play with other people participating in the event and so i'm looking forward to if you want to come hang out let me know what deck you think i should build there are a lot of really sweet cards so i'm looking to really try anything at this point and it should be a really good time yeah yeah it's gonna be fun so uh, we'll have some giveaways and stuff from from cool stuff in there so show up it'll be super fun can't wait Check and Aaron will have tons of uh, Allegiance experience already. So, you know, having her go first, having having Aaron bat lead off, so to speak, uh, going to make it easier for us, Evan. That's true. Well, that and you don't have to get up before noon on a Wednesday. So. True. Also that. Well, I don't have to get up before noon. I don't get out of bed. So. <laughs> what, what is getting out of bed? Look, I, uh, for a guy who wrote an article on August 21st of last year, uh, that basically said, could this please happen? It happened. Uh, as of January 7th, Alex Bertoncini has a lifetime suspension from yep. the DCI. Moving on from uh, spoilers to the banned and restricted announcement. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Alex Bertoncini is perhaps the most well-known these days, maybe still second most well-known of the serial uh, offenders of the laws of Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it finally, you know, fifth time's the charm, I guess, five strikes and you're out. Uh, and Alex is no longer uh, allowed in competitive Magic the Gathering. The last straw <clears throat> apparently was a event uh, here in California uh i believe i think it was gp vancouver as i heard it but was, vancouver. was it yeah. in vancouver? vancouver i heard that it was at a, i thought it was at a store nearby here but it could have been okay so it was a side event at gp vancouver where mm -hmm. he took a hardened scales off of an ancient stirrings which is not a thing you can do um and it was determined that that was an attempt to rules violation and not simply a mistake uh that was the final <laughs> straw and uh goodbye to alex Bertoncini. Wizards was just waiting. Like the entire judge program was like, just give me a reason. Please just well, hold your mouth. This is the same judge program that invited him to their, their judge conferences to give seminars on how to prevent against cheaters or how to deal with cheaters. Like that was a controversial decision in and of itself. And then he's up there apparently like com complaining that his opponents are cheating against him. Like that's some sort of problem he has to deal with. Like, oh my God, this whole thing. And then... And then, remember when he wrote this big treatise, this huge screed after my article went out about how he's ready to turn it all around and make yep. good for the community and stuff, and then he goes and deletes that. So, yep, sure did. I mean, you know. I don't know. I just, I just want, I want to touch on something I saw that kind of frustrated me a little bit. Um, there were people after the ban was announced that for whatever reason were tagging his friends and, and, and 
you know, his girlfriend and, 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 and gloating uh, about that. And I'm really not okay with that. You know, you can say whatever you want about him and you can feel the way that you feel about him, but I, I'm not really sure what reaching out to people close to him is supposed to do. I think that was a really crappy move and, yeah. um, you know, relationships are complicated and I think it's not as easy as saying, I, I think it's very easy to say, well, I would stop talking to a person if they did X or whatever, but relationships don't always work like that. And then there's nuances and context. And I, I don't know what these people thought they were, his friends were supposed to do or what his girlfriend was supposed to do. I, I, I think reaching out to them was, was a really crappy thing. And so I think if you have any feelings towards him, you need to keep it focused on him and not the people around him. Yeah, that's percent agree. That absolutely. Don't be don't be a prick. That's awful. Like, feel free to show the ire to Alex because Lord knows he's earned it. Um, but you know the the whole after the people near him, that's weird. And that's bad. Um, nice. yeah. And for what it's worth, Alex approached the judges. The judges didn't approach approach Alex. That that is a point worth mo noting. But the point is, he literally tried to talk about cheating and then later cheated. And yeah, that was a problem. Uh, the fact that the Oh, man, that judge. So the judge program allowing Alex to speak at a judge's event was a very weird uh, moment in Twitter discussion for the magic community, mm -hmm. because a lot of people were like, oh, it's catch me if you can. He's Frank Abagnale or Abagnale or right. Abagnale. I'm having an Evan Irwin moment where I don't know how to. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but it's like, he's Abagnale. the guy that got him the whole time. He's Leonardo DiCaprio from Catch Me If You Can. And Judge Pro Program is Tom Hanks. And, you know, maybe this is helpful. And a lot of people were like, mm, no, I don't think so. That's not going to that's not gonna end well. Yeah. Another weird layer here. Um, I would weirdly be more okay with Alex speaking at a judge conference now than before. I don't think that it's a thing that should happen. I'm just saying. Because he doesn't have anything to sort of gain or lose. Exactly. There's point. no, there's no, yeah, there's no giving up. He's given up the ghost at this point. There's no coming back from the point of no return. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just a, just a weird, weird time. So Do while you... Know, is Underground Dojo Keyboard Cage Fighters coming back anytime soon, by the way? I have no idea. I when's, hope not. When's, uh, when's um, he coming back? All, all I know is, you know, for what it's worth, there's something I've seen a lot of people sort of doing, like, you know, the huge dance and, you know, the witch is dead and all that. And for me, I, again, given the fact I wrote a whole article about it, I just I just feel kind of sorry for the kid. Like he thought that, that the way to get ahead was to cheat. And well, it's unfortunate it's because even some of his harshest critics will agree that he was a good magic player. Like this wasn't somebody that was... Oh, and fiving things and then shot to the top. This is somebody that when he first started out had some real talent and had some real ability. And, you know, I agree with Evan in that it is sad and that there are people who have kind of looked back on this and said, you know, he didn't have to do this. This is somebody that could have gotten there on talent alone, on ability alone, right. with maybe more practice or more more time or more dedication. It didn't have to be like this. And and even after the first, you know, banning, you know, I'm one of the few people where I do think there should be a road to rehabilitation. I don't know what that road is, but I think if you if you were to you know, get your ban, you serve your time, you come back and you clean up your act. I do think you should have an opportunity to play again. And he could have really turned this around. He could have done his time, did it mm -hmm. once, and then been on the straight and narrow. I think he could have done that. There's just so many other ways this could have gone, whether it be through his own natural talent and no bands initially, or you did your band, you learned, and you you turned everything around. There's just so many ways this could have gone, and it didn't need to happen this way. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sort of celebrating. I'm just going like, well, right. I'm, I'm glad it, it finally we finally closed <laughs> that chapter. There's no more. Alex was going to be at the PT and all this other garbage that was yeah. going to happen. So we we got there. We got to keep moving. Um, there was a concession in the GP finals oh, for, God. for GP early, Oakland. early, early call here. This early is gonna, Crassus. This is early Crassus here. This is going to be coverage <laughs> moment of the year. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, KCI's, pretty KCI's true counter was Delta Airlines. Uh, that was, that was really what happened there. Yeah. Um, we talk now, about the, the, uh, the obscene. Well, let's talk about what the issue, what, what the, what the thing right. is. Well, what the issue was, was essentially that he conceded because he didn't, you know, just get in a later flight. He didn't just miss his flight or try to reschedule. It was, how could you do this? Why would you ever play in this event the entire time just to leave in the finals? And it's like, sometimes people have adult responsibilities and jobs and well, requirements well, that they got to go do. What? 
Seriously. All right, I'll be the bad guy here. Okay. Magic players are not known for their preparation skills. You know what Twitter looks like the day before a GP. Does anyone have these rares? Does anyone have this in common? Does anyone have my life? You're a competitive magic player. You're going to a GP. Why are you booking a flight to leave Sunday morning? Like if you're going to win, I mean, this was Sunday when evening. When I go to GPs, and I'm not even good when I go to events, when, I make sure to, if I'm going to be there, I'm leaving like Monday morning. Like I'm giving myself that time because if through some miracle of God, I happen to do well. Why are you, why are you booking your, well, what I would note is, A, it was probably late in the day because you have to do the entire day two, then you have to do yeah. the top eight. So you had to get through all those matches and right. until you finally got to the finals. And, you know, sometimes you just have to go. And that's just a thing you have to do. All I'm saying is I don't feel it's right to disparage him over it and to say that he did something like necessarily wrong. Mm. Maybe he scheduled wrong, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad decision. There's lots right. of pros who like book flights for Sunday evening because, you know, if I don't make it, then I don't make it. And that's fine. Yeah. But, but if this they is do, not, this is not an uncommon thing uh, for magic players traveling to Grand Prix or indeed pro tours to schedule their flights before the end of the tournament. Mm -hmm. Cause you can't, you don't always make the top eight, right? You don't always make mm -hmm. Sunday at the pro tour. And when you do, you reschedule your flights. Uh, for Hunter Cochran, who conceded the finals of Grand Prix Oakland this past weekend to Ely Cassis, uh, notable X blue and a green jellyfish. I love Ely. Uh, uh, not, yeah. not Crussies. Just... Not Crussies, <laughs> Ely Cussies. Cussies. Ely is, uh, is really great people. He's good and, people. And uh, he had a, a really adorable moment on his uh, Facebook timeline where Ely was like, I have to make, I have to do well to hit platinum. And his dad commented and was like, good luck on making top four. And then Ely was like, but what about winning? And Ely's dad was like, yeah, sure. You can go ahead and win. It was really, <laughs> really like his dad knew enough to say, let's make top four. But then Ely was like, but dad. Anyway, but the point is that, uh, yeah, a whole bunch of circumstances came together. When you're, you know, I, I don't fault Hunter for this. He might have had a job early on Monday or whatever. It does make for an awkward situation in the booth it for does. Marshall and Eduardo. Uh, doesn't really shine a great light on, on competitive Magic the Gathering. The first Magic Fest ever ending with a concession in the finals um, isn't isn't spectacularly good. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's Tell basically let's also talk about the right. numbers that KCI put up this weekend. That was the other thing that people were talking about. This right. was the weekend where people were just like, all right, no, really, this deck has to go. Like it put up record numbers in Columbus and in and in Oakland. And and the conversation has come up again of something's gotta go. What's it gonna be? Matt Nass has like a ninety percent game win percentage with that thing. He's top eight what, four GPs with it? Like it's insane. Yeah. You, those numbers are literally ridiculous. Wizard now starts running spine of Ishsaw. Wizard starts banning things once it gets to I think it's like fifty seven percent win percentage. Is that there's a magical win percentage in which Wizards is like okay that's not good. You know something's got to go. And for what it's worth, Delver never passed that percentage. That's why they never ban anything out of Delver and Standard. Right. However, holy cow. Seriously, and then there's two things wrong with KCI. First of all, it's broken. I know you can fight against it and you hate against it because it's modern, but it's just busted. And I know something has to be the boogeyman and something has to be the best. But seriously, the second part is it sucks to watch. It sucks. It's it's eggs. It's let me go use the bathroom while you figure out what you're doing because I can't just necessarily can auto concede because you can every once in a while just whiff and not actually finish off the combo. So it's like the worst of both worlds. Like it's something you're gonna have to metagame heavily against and and or you're going to have to sit there and watch it on coverage while those those poor commentators are just like grasping for things to talk about. Like at one point, what Cedric was talking about, like what he was going to eat for dinner that night while they were talking while the guy was just going off and doing his in thing. The, in the team open. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the world we're living in right now and we don't have to. Wizards can change that. All right. Let's keep moving. I mean, the real weird reason why he conceded was so that it wouldn't win the finals, so that it wouldn't get banned, right? That's the that's wow. the that's the sneaky play. Wow, that's, that's the next level. You ain't on right there. That's 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 quite the next level for me. Um, okay, so we got to talk a little bit about best of one. Okay, best of one becoming a real thing. Victory lap. Not uh, again. This is also like Alex. I'm just like you know, I'm right, but I don't necessarily want to revel in it because I felt like it was. Anyway, the point is, I'm happy that it's 
being accepted, at least being talked about. Like, we have to recognize that, like, up to an hour of watching Magic, a single match with sideboarding, with all of those different layers, is great for us enfranchised players and is not great for the unenfranchised players. And they're like, well, why do you have to cater to the unenfranchised players? And I'm like, because there's such a giant pile of money over there, okay? Right. It is a giant They've ridiculous. Got us. They've already got us. We're, We're going to play Magic if it's best of eight. We're going to play Magic if, if it takes us six hours to get to a tournament. So what they want are the people who are playing Gwent and Artifacts to come over to Magic, and this is the way to do it. So if we, we're going to have, we're the dinosaurs. We got to change. Right. So there were a few points that uh, uh, Saffron Olive had wrote about speaking essentially that it's very fast and that's great. Uh, the risk is that it might be too fast if we're all super aggro decks just running at each other. Uh, the risk being card design, because it's hard to design necessarily for best of one, but I think you're starting to see that with everything being almost everything being a modal spell. That 5-5 five, five has a naturalize on it for no yeah. other reason in my opinion other than arena exists and best of one exists and make sure these cards are as good as possible against the widest possibility of decks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a better viewing experience for best of one. It, it, it happens and it goes away. Then you get to see two more decks or two different decks. Maybe even if you see the same decks or whatever, that would be a surprise. You'd be like, whoa, we can see the same thing twice. That's weird. Um, the risk being increased variance and less skill. This is where I, I really dislike the way that the ranking system works in Magic Arena because the way that they have structured it, they want you to have a 50% game win percentage. And for what it's worth, based on my own like running MTGA tracker on my machine, which tracks my game win percentage it's more or less like 51 percent or something because if you're at 50 percent, you're never going to be able to go infinite you're never going to be able to get more out than you put in and you're always going to play for example limited it's the worst because limited it used to be just based on your uh your your match count you know what i mean so your your wins at that point so you could have good players with bad decks or bad players with good decks and you would run into both of those types of players in that type of queue now both rank and uh, and your match record are being put together, which means it's trying to keep you closer to that magical 50%, because that's right. where they're going to make a ton of money. So uh, hmm. so that just kind of pisses me off, to be honest. Interesting. Um, there is a, there's a risk of less paper crossover, and this is where I was talking about a couple weeks ago, where I was like, Wizards, you really need to start making that connection with like the local store and arena. You need to start getting those hooks in and getting them in early, because that could be a problem. That, that could be a serious issue. Um, I mean, I've been playing more best. So I, of the three of us, I'm the one that did the Hearthstone grind for mm -hmm. a little while. Uh, I, I tried to get the legend every month. I did the, I did a little bit of streaming, but mostly it was just trying to get the legend to try to get qualified for the local tournaments to try to make the pro tour equivalent of that. Right. And I did that sort of semi seriously. I never really did a whole bunch of, I ended one season top 100 uh, in Hearthstone, which was like, good that's great i mean it was it was pretty good it means i was best in the, in north america one month uh i was like 80 87th or something right. um which is you know that's these uh but this is the closest analog to that that i've ever been a part of and i'll be honest with you i've played more magic games of magic in the last nine days than i have in the previous like three months like i'm playing more magic now than i ever have partially because arena is a great program and i would play arena regardless of whether best of one was available but also because best of one allows you to just play so many games and just keep going and keep repairing you mm -hmm. um so you know take that as you will well you literally are basically saying what i said when i was yeah. just like i've played more magic over this past year than i have in like the past 10 years like it's yeah, been sure. insane uh, and how good uh, Arena is. However, uh, quick side note, sort of splash damagey. Uh, I have been completely enthralled with Slay the Spire. If you have never played Slay the Spire, it's a deck building game, and it is brilliant. And I don't have time to go into it. I've heard it. of Slay the Spire. I think so who told me to check out Slay the Spire. It is Might so good. Jeff Foster. I think we talked about it in a pre-show. We also talk, talked about it in a pre-show. Yeah. Yep. Because I, I can't help but gush about that thing. Uh, all right, let's keep moving here. We're going to talk about Jadine Clomperens, who are yes. who is, who is going to Wizards. Congratulations. She's going Wizards to Wizards again. Going, coaching going to play design. Design. Is that right? Oh, you're doing well at something? Come work for us. Right. Yes. She's going to play design, as I understand. Play design. Yeah. Yep. Which is great. 
Jadine, brilliant magic player. I mean, she is the pro's pro. You know, there are people, there are pros who read her articles and, and pros are famous for not really consuming a lot of content. But when she announced that she was leaving, PV chimed in, BBB chimed in. Um, she's amazing. I've had the pleasure of knowing her for a couple of years now. I think she's going to do really, really great things. And, and Emma Handy also, this was her debut weekend doing coverage mm -hmm. um, at SCG Columbus. The consensus is she killed it. Um, as we all knew she was going to do. And so this was a very big weekend for the both of them. Yeah, Not awesome. surprising that uh, that Emma crushed it on coverage as that right. sort of <laughs> and, and, you know, you can just tell that that's, that's her real house. Uh, for Jadine, the other thing about uh, who they choose to hire for play design has been really interesting to me. About half the time they choose not just pros, but pros who are like very archetype specific. And Jadine, otherwise known as John Dean, uh, very well known for her love of black, green, mid range ish kind of decks. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think she's going to do very well. Also, uh, Emma and Jadine are a couple. That is one of the magic power couples, as oh, it were. Yeah. Um, and Emma's going to split time between Roanoke and Seattle. That's going to be. I rough. don't know how she's going to do that, but. Really? Okay. Well, that's good up, luck that's with up that. To her to figure out. Yeah. I mean, sure. Why not? Um, that said, let's move on here. Let's talk a little bit about Tempo Storm. Team Tempo Storm, which is Caleb Durward, Jeff, uh, Jeff Hoglund, oh, Jeff Hoglund, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Hoglund, sorry, I didn't mean anything by that, I was just it's screwing up. It's pronounced Crassis. Crassis. <laughs> An MTG nerd girl, indie girl, God almighty. You've been hanging around with me too long, you were like, girl. <laughs> what is going on? Um, so MTG Nerd Girl, Caleb D, Jeff Hoagland, all of them are now a part of this Tempo Storm team. Essentially, Tempo Storm is uh, represents a bunch of different streamers and players of all the different types of games so that they can be essentially the conduit for different brands to interact with their followers, as it were. So if you had, because, you know, the HPs and the NVIDIAs and the Red Bulls of the world, you can't call them up. You can try. They're not mm -hmm. going to answer your phone calls. Well, they right. will answer a phone call from Tempo Storm, whereas they won't answer it from from Jeff. Mm -hmm. Just kind of calling me like, "Hey, I got a big stream. Yeah. I, I swear, and you really want to tell your my followers about your new products or whatever." Well, like diversifying your portfolio. You know, I work in investments for a living. You know, and so you don't want to have you know just large cap funds. No, you want to have a small cap. You want to have a mid market. You want to have all these things. And so you know you don't want to have just Hearthstone players. You don't just want to have Fortnite players. You want to have a mix of people. So that way, when you do approach those companies, you can show them all sorts of demographics that you're looking to target. And um, I think this is a great thing. I think they're all solid players. Um, I've partic in particular, I've watched MTG Nerd Girl. Her numbers have just skyrocketed um, since she started streaming Arena. She was one of the the first ones to really hop on board the Arena train. Um, and so I think it's a good thing. I just can't wait to. I feel like it's very obvious what the benefit is for the companies. Mm -hmm. I'm just anxious to see how it's going to trickle down to them. I just want to make sure that they are rewarded. Yeah. Um, and to me, it wasn't immediately clear how they were going to benefit from this. So as long as they're getting their coins and everything, I think it's great. But I was just, I, mean, I just remember looking at it and going, what are you guys getting out of this? Right. <laughs> Do you do it? Well, no, you, you certainly get to be under the shield, which I think is a big deal for any anyone who is, you know, at this point, Caleb is getting, you know, three, he has 3K viewers right now. Uh, Jeff Hoagland has over a thousand viewers every time he, he clues in. Uh, MTG Nerd Girl, who, uh, Brittany Hamilton, uh, excellent streamer, former poker player that I know very well, um, and was also on the creators panel at GP Vegas last summer. Uh, with some heavy hitters. I think, Evan, you were on that panel, actually, mm -hmm. um, with uh, with folks like uh, Brian Kibler and all those kind of folks. I got to be the, has... the one to awkwardly explain that I don't, I don't live based on the revenue from streams and whatnot right. and content. Right, exactly. I was like, I, uh, I, I But yeah, uh, I think that this is a fabulous announcement and a big deal for Magic Arena. Mm -hmm. um, quick shout out to myself. I was quoted in Caleb's bio oh boy. about something I said about Caleb once. That was um, awesome. That he wins games no one else can win and loses games no one else can lose, which is still to this day accurate. <laughs> um, but yeah, Caleb, just an excellent three people to be the first because they're so individually unique in terms of what they offer, in addition to being good, in addition yeah, to people are watching. You know, yeah. and they are. There are people who are looking at that Twitch tab and 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 trying to find people to bolster their teams. And so if you're there, you're streaming, you're putting on a good show. It could be you. Tempo Storm's a big deal. They got a lot of history with Magic uh, the Gathering, founded, of course, by Raynad, 
uh, Dan Chow, Frodan, uh, who put together the Twitch Rivals event recently in about 48 hours. Big shout out to that. To nice. that undertaking where uh, that was uh, uh, put together for Twitch. Uh, he is an incredible talent. Uh, Raynad has a, is a very uh, well-known uh, 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 powerhouse in Hearthstone and with Tempo Storm. They have teams for Hearthstone, for Heroes of the Storm, and for Overwatch, and now for Arena. So that's a big step forward. Fair enough. All right, so let's keep moving here. We've still got lots and lots of stuff. We're not even going to be able to get to all of it. Uh, touch real quickly, there is a Ravnica art book that was released. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's just like all the other art books that are fantastic. So Absolutely. go check that out. I uh, got to get me a, a copy of that. <clears throat> Want to take what was it? that? Lots of good plot points as well, um, specifically when it comes to the ethereal, the card where they're releasing the ghosts. Um, the book gives you a little bit of background as to why that moment happens. And so if you want to know why things are happening the way they are in cards, the story to kind of explain that, the art book is really, really good for that. Fair enough. Uh, so Sam from Mystic Studies, our buddy Sam, uh, posted on December 23rd, that's how long it's been since we've had one of these, uh, that it's been a remarkable year for his channel, but he's going to take a small break. Originally, he was being paid by uh, Patreon on a monthly basis. He has now changed it to a episode. Whenever he posts an episode, then he will he will charge his patrons, uh, which is a thing. And uh, I certainly can see the echoes of how I felt when I started to essentially stop making the magic show, which is the element of burnout and the idea of you start stressing out over... Like there's that, there's that high when you post content and people like it. And there's that wave of joy that comes over you. And then there's that stress and anxiety of, okay, I got to go climb that mountain again. And I can't just reclimb the mountain. It has to be better. And I have to go higher than I did the last time. And you get to that grind. And he, he got to the point where he's, you know, he's posting these things that are getting hundreds of thousands of views and better than almost any other magic content that's being watched out there. Oh, yeah. And that if creates he a hell of a boogeyman. win the content creator award that uh, MTG, what was it? MTG uh, Strategist put together. I don't, I like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, uh, that's that really, Sam's been in an <laughs> words mean things. Uh, Sam's been an inspiration to me in that he's really redefined how to be a content creator. You know, he makes his own schedule. You know, he makes his videos when they're ready. You know, he's not like a lot of people that will churn it out every week or every two weeks or every day, even even though it might not be good, they're still giving you a video or still giving you a blog post. He takes his time. He puts in research, he puts in work. And when it's ready, you're going to get a video. And, um, you know, the, the way that he does things is is very different than a lot of people do. And I think that's what, that's what has made him so successful um not only the things that he chooses to cover but how he chooses to do that and and also just having the 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 awareness to know that you need to do this sort of thing um you know i've watched creators go through burnout and you can see it a mile away um and so for him to be able to spot that in himself and say okay this is something i need to do um is something else that i feel a lot of content creators could could learn to identify with themselves and i hope that he comes back and and continues to slay the term Renaissance man gets thrown around an awful lot. Uh, Sam is a accomplished guitarist, a world-class video editor, and is putting a bunch of his life on pause to work on his doctorate in Italian literature. Um, you know, it's, how, how dare you be so good at so many things? Um, so good luck to him in the future. I look forward to him taking it, at, taking it slow and at his own pace. All right, so let's go ahead and pick a winner. Uh, as many people noted, the bot cat caught up. It did eventually. <laughs> I saw that, and I was like, "Oh boy!" Did, it? did, it, did the bot just like spam us? Great, it just awesome. spammed. It was like a, they described it as like a roller coaster of just going down the thing because i can see on the back end i can see the number continuing to tick up but i could i never saw anyone getting responded to and finally the the, the lag caught up to it and it was like 87 different messages it was ridiculous aaron tell me about back ends <laughs> wow <laughs> let's pick you that find out more on back ends at the twitch at the at the pre pre-release on friday at twitch.tv plus loading ready run congratulations to fred the third fred the i i i nice that is the winner I like it. Go ahead and hit up. Uh, it's pronounced Fred Thay. Thay. 
think you had it right the first time. I think you had it right. I think so. That said, oh, hit up Aaron. She can help get you your $50 gift stick. Uh, thanks very much to CoolStuffInc.com for sponsoring that, as always. All right, let's move on here to Desperate Ravings. Where well, it took an hour for us to get to Desperate Ravings. Only an hour. Uh, there are no more orcs. There are no more, uh, was it online? Oh, so messy. Uh, mm. Online. Uh, Magic, Magic the Gathering, online digital object, online response uh, uh team unity? something no. someone somebody can tell me in the chat what what orc means because i forgot uh, but either way they were the moderation team for the twitch channel they were the ones responding to your problems on arena <laughs> i'm sorry wait a minute wait a minute did you say that the twitch chat was moderated did yeah. i did i catch that right yes is that... yes okay how bad is that chat they have been paying people and it's still that bad. Online oh, response hard. crew. Thank you, Maverick uh, Girl. Thank you, Kendra. Yes, thank you, Kendra. The online response crew, uh, the way it was set up, and I know this because I was private I was privately contacted by someone who was affected by this. And they said, look, a few things were true. One, they had no idea they were being canned until they were like, literally, this is like basically your last day. And that was also posted on the Reddit to that right. effect. Uh, the 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 issue, at least the way that it was framed or explained to me, uh, is that uh, Washington State's uh, minimum wage is going up to fifteen dollars an hour, and they were being paid on their base pay was ten dollars an hour if you get paid there, and they got like a dollar raise every year, and so that could add up. And of course, they had benefits and whatnot. They could work from home. All these people were working remotely. Um, you know, this person didn't work in Washington State at all, but they all went through a company that it is in Washington and does work with wizards. And so they have moved all those jobs. Again, this is allegedly, I haven't followed up this myself, but allegedly moved those jobs to India where they're a heck of a lot cheaper under the, I think the explanation was they wanted to have a, a larger uh, international presence for, yeah, for their support sure. teams, uh, sure. which just so happened to be way cheaper than if they just kept on the contract uh, for those in well, going to the there's, company in Washington. Yes, yeah, so points I want to bring up. Um, you can be upset about the situation without the casual racism. And I'm not saying that we've done that, but some of the responses I've seen are very, you know, comments about India and comments about languages, and we don't need to make sure that you're not doing no, that. Right. Happens. I'm not trying to despair. Yeah, to be clear. Right, and I'm, we were saying right. the response has, and I understand. has had some of that. And so um, you can definitely be upset about one without having to, to bring up the other. And let me just say, these former employees, they want to spill. Yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. There's, there's been some Reddit posts. They have no issue with letting you know what they know, and so um, keep your eyes peeled because yeah, put yeah. a put a uh, put a shot of whiskey into them and they'll spill their life story to right. you. I mean, <laughs> as, as as I understand it, they had access to a lot of stuff that we have not seen, mm -hmm. a whole whole bunch of it. And but I want you to think of it this way: uh, now we're going to have <laughs> another company in uh, across the world. It doesn't matter if it's India or Germany or wherever. All those people are now also going to have access to all this incredibly sensitive information. And they're not necessarily going to be people who love magic through and through like these ORC uh, folks have been for so many years. And uh, and also the response time right now has just dropped to, you know, it's been very, very bad as I understand it. It's gone from, you know, maybe a day or so to God knows yeah. how long these days, probably multiple days, if not a week. Um and uh, there were some other things that were that were shown, like, for example, uh, if you report a player for stalling on Magic Arena, they do nothing about it. And I yep. mean, actual nothing. I don't care how bad that person trolled you. They do nothing about now, it. Now, on an unrelated note, they finally fixed the Cabal Therapy bug so you can watch your replays again. Well, that's nice. Right. It's appreciated. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just one of those things that, Don't you know, relax. you can be taken for granted in many ways. And I understand the budgets and the cost cutting and everything has a cost and yada yada, uh, and that's the thing that's that you know has to happen. But uh, the way it happened was very unfortunate. The way these things generally happen because you've contracted a a company again, you're handling very sensitive information. They want to cut you off from that information as soon as that your services are no longer you know rendered, and that's kind of how that stuff goes down. And it's it just sucks yeah. to pull the rug out from contract under people. work, man. I mean, I understand that they've had contracts for a decade plus. Um, but you know, it's, that's con that's just being, that's the life of a freelancer, the life of a contractor. Um, you know, that's how it goes. That's Absolutely. It, it sucks, but you know, that it's, it's, the, it's, it, that's life. 
Well, we don't have a lot of time for the rest of these topics. Uh, I would note that you should definitely go check out DraftSim. DraftSim.com uh, is a draft simulator, and they have a bunch of new updates that we were going to talk about. Uh, there's a thing called Lotus Tracker, which will integrate LSVs. Dope. Yeah, this and this is something similar that what Hearthstone has had, which is a program that runs alongside your draft, and you can mouse over the card list, the, the card list to the left, and it'll have LSV's actual rating and his comments on the card pop up for you next to it, which is really cool. So for those who have issues drafting and want some help, you can certainly do that uh, via that way. Um, uh, also, wash your butt, okay? Everybody wash the butt. Because when <laughs> right, you don't that wash was like butt, the top thread of the week, right? Was that, could we not? I mean, stereotypes exist for a reason, but seriously, wash yeah. your butt, guys. Come on. You know, I, 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 when I go to a Magic event, I always make sure to take some travel. I, I find the travel aisle to be great for Magic events. The little travel deodorants. Mm -hmm. uh, I always carry a thing of travel wipes with me in case my eyeliner runs or in case I get a little dewy. Um, travel toothbrushes are great. They're like a dollar. You can carry them everywhere. Honestly, if you know that you have those issues, carry those things with you. Lord knows, Magic players, you guys pack like you're running away from home half the time. All the things you guys need, instead of bringing that seventh deck, go ahead and bring yourself a little little thing of wipes. You'll be I'm much definitely, I'm definitely, I'm definitely uh, keep, always keeping an eye out. Being half Greek and half Jewish, I am a swarthy individual. Um, and so... <laughs> It's uh, it, it's tough. It's tough over here in Mox Ruby land. Yesterday, when I was wearing my turkey onesie all day, I tore a dryer sheet in half and put them under the armpits. Just oh yeah, I'm I'm dying currently with all these. I mean, it's, it, you know, LRR has professional lighting and everything. So there's currently three different boxes of lighting right. beaming down on me. And so if you see me I'm, doing this, I'm not cosplaying a chicken. I'm just making sure. The degree I was a chicken <laughs> nice. Well, you also have multiple machines that are running very hot. I mean, yeah. three monitors, two microphones. I mean, we're gigging, baby. This and a partridge in a pear tree. Pretty nice. much, yeah. Very nice. Well, uh, I will note real quickly the, the splash damage for this week: uh, ninety-nine percent invisible, which is a Roman Mars outfit, which is an incredible podcast. You should totally listen to I it. I have no idea what you just said. Ninety-nine percent invisible is brilliant. Check it out. It's a, it's a podcast it? that is named Ninety-Nine Percent Invisible. Okay. Yes, that's the name of the podcast. It's about talking about things that aren't necessarily like bright in your face or that you may have realized. And that's really neat. Anyway, so we got to move on here to the finisher. We got to get our thanks in. We're going to talk about the people who have subbed and resubbed. I'm going to pull right. those up right now. And, We're done with the stanks and now with the thanks. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, well, look, Undead Thor TV has subscribed. Thank you very much, MTG Young Mage. Thanks a lot, buddy, for coming back and subscribing. Go to bed, young man. A little right. aloof uh, has resub for nine months. Nine months, holy cow, they say. Chris RD19 resub for five months. Y'all flip my Delver, as he says. <laughs> nice. Flipping that, flipping that three two, y'all. All right, uh, MTG Pack Foils resub for three months. Thank you, MTG Effect resub for five months. Beyond Sadistic resub for five months. Aaron playing Arena question mark exclamation mark best month anniversary ever. Yeet. <laughs> Blazing Disciple has subscribed via Prime. Thank you, as well as Karn two one nine two one seven. So thank you guys all for subscribing, and I'll hand it over to Ruben to talk about the bits. Uh, be be sure to celebrate Jeff, Jeff Bezos's divorce by giving us your Twitch Prime sub. Um, thank you so much for all that Jeff Jeff Bezos money. Now with that alimony money, thank you to T.S. Saliak. I'm going to make fun of Bezos as much as I possibly can. Thank you to T.S. Saliak for 25 bits, House of Shadows 69 bits. Nice giggity. Mr. Lubufu, 85 bits, 00, zero Busy Hands, 101 bits, and Snow Cows, 300 bits. Thank you guys thank so much. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But we do turn the corner to the finisher. Danny Trejo of Heat, Con Air, and Desperado fame has recently been selling copies of signed magic cards. For as low as 30 bucks, you too can have a copy of Oathsworn Vampire, signed by Razor Charlie himself, Butcher's Cleaver from La to Tortuga. La Tortuga. Evan. La Tortuga. Or even your very own trusty machete machete. We also know that celebs like Justin Gordon-Levitt have been feeling themselves some Magic the Gathering recently too, which begs the question, what card would you like to get signed by your choice of Magic celebrity? Aaron? Well, a few months back, Padma Lakshmi tweeted interest in the Celebrity Magic the Gathering tournament and more power to her. So when she makes her way to a Magic Fest near me, I'm going to have her sign my foil copy of Sensei's Divining Top Chef because I like my top to be things. It ain't Sensei's Divining Bottom, y'all. It ain't Sensei's Divining Bottom, that's right. <laughs> Ruben? 
Well, as you just mentioned, Joseph Gordon-Levitt has been feeling himself some MTG these past couple of months with a special on Geek and Sundry to boot. So I think if I ever ran into hit record Joe at my local f and I think I'll get him to sign for me 500 days of summer blues. Very nice. Well, look, I'm a big fan of William Hung, a man who became famous exclusively for an historically dreadful performance on American Idol. As for what card to have the reality TV star assigned for me, I think I'm going to get myself a set of goblin charbelchers and get them autographed. She bangs. Oh, boy. Yep. Yep. That ends another episode of Magic Mike's. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me in twitch.tv slash loading, re- loading ready run on Friday. Be there. That's right. Tomorrow morning. Show up. It's going to oh, be Oh, tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah. I keep um, thinking. Oh, no, you're right. I, I keep thinking it's Thursday, or Thursday. I'm sorry. It's weird. Anyway, I'm ready it's for it Thursday, to be here. It's Friday to you, but we're on the West Coast. Oh, don't don't, don't get me wrong. We will be working tomorrow, but right. you guys don't get to see everything until Friday. See, Dix has got us. There Dix we go. There. That's that's on me. Well, look, it's late. I'm tired. We move on here to our... We're tired. I got pulled on. You're not going to let me say goodbye to the people? Come on. Unbelievable. Uh, thank you, Ruben. Thank me for joining? Um, no, I can't. I can't with you. Thank you, no, Ruben. No, no, no. You Ruben. forgot about me. You're not my real dad. We can't do <laughs> Move here to our final slide. Join us early next Wednesday. We're going to be here for like eight hours. Oh, we're going to be there longer than that. Uh, like 12 hours. Like 12 hours. <laughs> I want to thank our sponsor, coolstuffing.com. Our, co- our co-sponsor, cardorder.com. My co-host, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening and hope you support us at patreon.com slash magic mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, do everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, twitch.tv at magic mics, on Twitter at magic mics cast, our magic mics subreddit, and like the magic mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at magic mics podcast at, g- podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio only podcast at magic mics podcast.libsyn.com or find us on iTunes or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody. Y'all flip by Delver, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Delver flippers. Dirty Delver flippers.